This class focuses on exercise testing and programming in cancer patients. So exercise testing, and this is from the Chronic Disease and Disabilities book. One of the things they recommend is that maybe you want to test cancer patients at some, at multiple time points. Test them before they go through their treatment, get an idea of their daily function, and of course this is much easier if this is a person who has been a client with you all along. You can do some assessments during treatment to make assessments and changes during program, just like you would with a, a healthy client and then testing them post-treatment and follow up every one to two years. And it really depends whether the person has to go back to an active job or not. And so you may have to focus on some functional testing. This is out of the ACSM guidelines. On the other hand, they say if people are really interested in becoming active and being active while they have cancer, that they really should be cleared by their physician. That probably makes sense, that they need to have physician approval. But, you know, they feel that if you have to make people go through unnecessary testing and comprehensive fitness assessments, it could create a big barrier to becoming active. So, I mean, if people are just interested in doing some walking, some resistance training just to keep function or flexibility programs, they should be able to do that without going through a comprehensive test. So it really depends on the person, how active they were before cancer, and you know what are their goals in for getting through cancer, the type of cancer they have, and of course everything is going to be related to any uh, health history that they've had before cancer, and how they feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And what they recommend too, this is out of the ACSM guidelines book, you know, do some health-related fitness assessments. The previous class we talked about all the systems that can be affected by cancer that are also impacted by exercise. So perhaps you do wanna do some functional assessment, balance assessment, um, you know, some fitness assessments such as the six-minute walk test. And if people are going to go for any max or submax testing, that there's no need that they be any medical supervision otherwise than what would be done. For example, if somebody wants, you know, is in need of a graded exercise test with ECG monitoring, the fact that they are a cancer patient wouldn't really make any difference in that. And if they need to be monitored by a physician or have a physician present for the test based on other factors. And as we covered from the other class, understand the most common systems where someone can have issues with chemotherapy and radiation and other treatments. Are they at risk for fractures, osteoporosis? Are they at risk of heart problem? Are they at risk of neuropathies and tinnitus? Uh, are they going to have muscle wasting because of prednisone or androgen suppression? Um, so, and the other thing, as we showed from the research poster the other day, 1RM testing is safe and is well tolerated in breast cancer survivors. So what is the effectiveness of exercise programs for cancer? As we mentioned in class the other day, there are still a lot of emerging data for as many people that get cancer, there are surprisingly few exercise training studies. Uh, it, it doesn't really seem to make sense, although, of course, now that people know about that, there is more and more research being done on all different types of cancer and exercise. Many of the studies are small, just like the one we did here. It, it's hard to recruit participants that maybe meet a particular guideline that are willing to come into your facility and exercise several times a week. The studies are often time limited, such as ours. It was a three-month study. Uh, we did not have any funding to do any follow-up about them. As we talked about the other day, physicians particularly have confusion about what our guidelines uh, for cancer patients regarding exercise and the ACSM Cancer Roundtable has done has helped clarify that. But overall, patients can improve. Training is safe for patients. We, we have enough data to show that. And you can get improvements in pain, 
sleep quality, um, lessens fatigue, and improves quality of life.